We are going to jump to nuclear chemistry for our next unit since the end of the trimester is so close. This is chapter 21 in the book. In nuclear chemistry, we're going to be talking about radioactivity. And this occurs because of the result of an unstable nuclei. Nucleons are particles in the nucleus, our neutrons and our protons. Radioisotopes are atoms that contain any radioactive nuclei. So these are the isotopes of elements that are radioactive. Nuclear reactions or equations will be expressed the products of a radioactive decay, fusion, or fission. And radioactive decay is a process in which a radionuclide uh, or a radioactive nucleus will spontaneously decompose. So with nuclear chemistry, we are focusing on the chemistry of the nucleus of these atoms and how they change over time. Most common types of radioactive decay, there are a few that you need to know. First, there is an alpha decay. And here is the symbol, the Greek letter alpha. Or you could use the helium nucleus. Now remember, this is a helium nucleus, so there's no electrons around it. Therefore, it has a plus 2 charge. But an alpha particle has a mass of 4 and has 2 protons in it. So in an alpha particle, it will have 2 uh, neutrons and 2 protons in that particle. So it's an energized helium nucleus. It travels in the air only a few centimeters, and it cannot penetrate human skin. Here's an example. Uranium-238 goes through an alpha decay. So one of the products is an alpha particle. And then the remaining product is uh, thorium-234. Thorium-234 is another uh, radioisotope. You will notice or should notice that the Masses on this side add up to be the same mass on this side. And then the proton numbers add up to be the same proton number as the reactant side. So our numbers will still be the same even though we are changing elements in this alpha particle is being given off this alpha radiation. So here's a picture of another example, plutonium-240, if it goes through an alpha decay. An alpha particle is given off, and then we have a new element here, uranium-236. Uh, uranium now remember, this will only occur with nuclear chemistry where you will see a uh, change in element and the change of protons. So here is the plutonium-234. Um, the alpha particle comes off, and it changes into uranium-236. So what product is formed when um, radium-226 undergoes an alpha decay? To do this, we're going to write what we already know. And we know radium, which is Ra, and it's 226. Look up the proton number on the periodic table, and that is number 88. Goes through an alpha decay, so we know that the Particle is 4,2-He, which is alpha. So what must be produced? Well, 226 minus 4 is 222. And 88 minus 2 is 86. So we are looking at radon. There's our alpha decay. Now, usually with these nuclear decays, we are looking at a... Um, you will be told what decay is going on. You can't, I can't just say radium-226 decays. You need to know the specific decay that uh, the element goes through. Here's another example. A beta decay is a beta particle. Again, you can use the Greek symbol B, or you can use the electron because it is a high energy electron. Now, with the beta decay, it can travel approximately 300 centimeters and can penetrate your skin, but this is very rare. An example of this is I-131. goes through a beta decay. 
and you'll notice that then it will produce um, XC131. One thing to keep in mind with this is you'll notice that the charge on an electron is negative 1. So on this side, a minus 1 plus a 54 is a 53, which matches on this side. There will be no mass change with, with a beta decay, but you will see a change in the number of protons. Be careful of the math here. A lot of times students would write that this is 52. This is not 52 because you're um, adding a negative charge to that side. You might be thinking, well, where does an electron come from in the nucleus? Electrons are generally found in the electron cloud, so how does an electron or a, beta, a negative beta particle come out of the nucleus? Well, what ends up happening is that you'll have a neutron, and this neutron will actually, under nuclear conditions, break into a beta particle, so here's our beta particle, and a proton. So you'll notice if you add these two together, you will get a zero charge, negative one and a plus one. And if you add the mass together, you get a one, which is the mass and charge of a neutron. So a neutron will transform in the nucleus and form a beta particle and a proton. Here's your example, a neutron, beta particle is given off, your proton is now added to the nucleus, so you'll see an increase in the number of protons, but no change in the mass. Another type of radioactivity is gamma. There's your Greek symbol. With gamma, there is no change in mass and there is no change in charge. Gamma is a photon of energy. And this travels very far. It can be stopped um, by approximately 5 centimeters of lead. This is a very high frequency uh, radiation, which means high energy. So here we have plutonium-244, which goes through a gamma decay. And you'll notice that there's no change in the mass, nor there is there a change in the number of, of protons. What ends up happening is the energy that's emitted occurs when the uh, neutrons and protons in the nucleus are unstable, and they have to reorganize and shift themselves to become stable. So in order for them to become stable, remember, stability equals a lower energy. Some energy has to be given off from that nucleus in form of a gamma decay, and this, the nucleus now becomes more stable. It's usually not written in a nuclear reaction. You usually see it accompany other reactions, like an alpha decay. If an alpha decay occurs, you now have a new nucleus, which needs to kind of reorganize and shift to become stable, and a gamma radiation will be given off at the same time. A positron, very interesting particle here. A positron is actually a positive electron. This is considered antimatter because it's a, posi a positively charged electron. And what ends up happening with a positron is when it's given off, it will usually collide with an electron in the electron cloud, and they're anni annihilated. And when that happens, a gamma ray will be produced. So here's an example of a positron decay. Carbon-11 goes through positron decay. You get uh, boron-11. You'll see a change in the number of protons right here, but no change in the mass. Again, on this side, plus 1 and a positive 5. A positive 1 and positive 5 is a 6. And the mass is 11 on both sides. So your masses and number of protons need to equal. Well, where does a positive electron come from? Well, it's kind of similar to what happens with a beta particle, except in a beta particle, we're going to see a change in neutrons a neutron breaking down into parts. Here you're going to see a proton converting into a positron and a neutron. So here a proton is going to change and you're going to get a plus charge and a mass of 1. So the only subatomic particle that has a mass of 1 and a charge of 1 is going to be our proton. Another type of decay is our electron capture. Now, electron capture is actually when an electron from the electron cloud is basically uh, pulled into the nucleus. 
And when this happens, you're going to notice that our electron is now on the reactant side. Every other type of radioactive decay, the particle was a product. It was on the product side. But in this instance, an electron is taken into the nucleus, and it will change around. Here, you'll notice the 37 decreases by 1 because it's a negative charge, but our mass stays the same. So when we have rubidium-81 going through an electron capture, it is going to create krypton-81. And what ends up happening here is that a proton from rubidium's nucleus will collide with that electron from the electron cloud and creates a new neutron. And that neutron, then, will change the number of protons, but not change the mass. So a proton and electron will collide and convert into a neutron. So it's kind of the opposite electron capture of the beta particle. Some sample problems here. Write the nuclear equations for the following process, um, processes. Mercury 201 undergoes electron capture. So in this instance, you're going to have mercury, which is um, Hg, and this will be 201, and mercury's number is 80, and it goes through electron capture, so this indicates that this will be a reactant, and what happens is you get 201, the mass doesn't change, but 80 minus 1 is 79, which ends up being gold, Au. Thorium-231 decays to form protactinium-231. So now here, they're giving you the, the reactant, thorium. And thorium is number 90. And it produces a particle plus protactinium, which protactinium is 50. D, oh, I'm sorry, is 91, and it has a mass of 231, and 91 is protactinium, and that's a PA for its symbol. So what symbol here we need to look? We have 231 on both sides, so whatever our particle is has no change in mass, and we have 90 on the reactant side and 91 on this side. So this must be a minus 1, and the only particle that has a minus 1 is our beta. So you could write it like that, or you could write the beta sign. So two ways that you're going to see nuclear equations being done. Nuclear stability, there's no single rule that allows us to predict radioactivity. Some observations are helpful, though, in making some predictions. There is the neutron to proton rule, a radioactive series, magic numbers, or number of protons and neutrons. With our proton rule, like charges repel each other. So in our nucleus, we have neutrons and protons, and the only one that has a charge is protons. So what keeps all the protons in the nucleus? Remember from way back when that strong nuclear forces or that force of attraction will keep our protons together in the nucleus. The neutrons also play a role. The, the neutrons are kind of like the buffer that keeps the positive charges from becoming too overpowering and essentially um, bursting out of the nucleus. So the more protons in the nucleus, the more neutrons you need to stabilize that nucleus. The neutron to proton ratio can then be very helpful in predicting the stability. And we used a very nice graph here to help us kind of predict what will happen in terms of radioactivity. So a radio nuclid or a radioisotope will decay until a stable ratio exists. If you notice over here on the graph, the red line, the very straight linear red line here, this is our one-to-one proton-neutron ratio. 
And you'll notice that as we go along with our proton-neutron ratio, that it, at the beginning it stays right along. But right about here, we're going to see a change in stability. Our stability is actually this shaded area here. This shaded area is the stable atoms. The ratio of protons and neutrons starts to change right around 20. Because the more protons we have, we now need to increase the number of neutrons even more. So too many neutrons, you're going to notice that neutrons will be converted to protons by beta emission. And this shaded area is called your belt of stability. So anything in there is considered stable. Once you get outside the belt of stability, it's going to help us determine what type of decay will take place. If it's above the belt, you have a high ratio of neutrons. So high ratio, high neutron number. So this will emit beta particles. So you're going to say beta emission. Because remember, in beta emission, your neutrons are converted to protons, which will bring down the proton-neutron ratio. Below the belt, you're going to see um, a high number of protons. So here, you're going to increase your neutron ratio by positron, so our positive electron, or electron capture. So this, this here will increase our number of neutrons, right? Okay. Now, with atomic number 84 and above, we're going to typically see alpha decay occur because it will decrease both the neutrons and protons because everything above um, 84 and higher are very radioactive so when they go through a decay they're mostly going to go through alpha decay doesn't mean they can't go through beta or positron but you're going to see alpha occur um, more often 